Welcome back to Need for Speed Heat, my friends. Today, it is stock, drift, and grip all head to head to head. This is a very classical Mustang, and it's the car we're going to be using today for a very special reason. Without further ado, let's get on. Now, something you may notice about this car very quickly is that this thing is spinning out and losing control. I was so worldly happy. You cannot understand when I started to see this car spinning around, losing control, not being able to know what it wants to do. It was a glorious, glorious thing to do. But without further ado, again, let's get to customizing. And there we are with the final product. So at this point, we need to equip some parts to the car. This car needs a few bits to get it going a little bit faster because it is a very stock car, let's be real. Uh, and uh, it did have some positive and negative effects to this. So we're going to be doing all three kind of uh, setups, if you will, throughout this video. You're going to see every single combination that is possible on this car and uh well i say every single company that's a lie because obviously there's off-road and the like but we're gonna get into the first event which is gonna be stock now i want to show you stock just to give you a baseline idea this is i say stock this is stock tires stock parts that would actually change the handling of the vehicle of especially of an old boy like this which you can clearly see at the beginning We've got some absolutely crazy wheel spin to the point where the AI is for some reason running ahead and hugging the side, which actually made it a little bit clearer for me to try and pass them, except him. So the very obvious thing that you've all seen with the normal handling in this game, when you drive, the cars are pretty, pretty sliding. Let's be real. It's very easy to get into a slide. You double press the accelerator, double clutch, and it will kick the car into a slide. And uh, I'm still getting used to it, and I wanted to use this stock baseline handling first. This was the first run I did. I did one run for each of the handling setups, and the reason for that is I just really thought stock was where you would start, right? So you want to start with stock, and we went on to drift second, because drift usually was the fastest and i thought assumed that it might actually possibly be a little bit faster this time but we'll get into that momentarily so yes it's very simple to get into a slide by mistake with the stock and you've all seen this uh, that it is possible to it basically feels like the old need for speed handling except the speed boost isn't there and so it's kind of weird you're kind of used to the, that that being there and again i haven't had much experience with this car so i was a little bit over the place to be completely fair now we didn't go through on lap one, this is lap two. This, this runs a little bit cleaner. You can see my drift is a little bit more controlled. I know what I'm doing. I know how to position the car very quickly. You can see an improvement in my overall driving ability with this beautiful, amazing sounding Mustang. I cannot get clear how incredible this sounds. And I was able, I was able to then control the drifts and make it a little bit more controllable. I was able to get little slides to kind of make me feel like I was going faster. That's one thing they've managed to do quite, quite well, is make stock feel fast still. If you go and slide, you can kind of keep that momentum that you could probably do from not sliding. There's obviously a, a slight significance now to the fact that you do lose speed when you slide, as a normal car should. But overall, it felt pretty good. It felt pretty good. It felt like need for speed handling, except the speed boost wasn't there. And I was actually happy <laughs> that the speed boost wasn't there. Kind of nice. Kind of nice. All this time we've waited, it's finally gone. So we got a 338 on this one. But then we're going to switch over to drift. So we're going to rebuild the car a little bit here. Do some slight changes to get the drift going properly. We're going to switch on to the drift suspension. And that's going to be a significant jump. There's a bunch of different ones. There's off-road, drift. And there's a bunch of different combinations overall with this. So we, we can go with showcase, which is a combination of road and drift. You'll see there's the case with a bunch of the other cars too. But sliding forward, this is drift. And straight away, you can actually see something quite significant here. Off the line, it's actually faster. You'll be able to see that a little bit more de detail later when we do the side-by-side. -side, but straight away, you can tell the drifts are a lot more aggressive. 
This corner, it's got the old Need for Speed handling traits of kind of spinning out. That's always been there. And this made me realize that that handling has always been there. It was just a little bit less controllable. You can now control it. If you are focused on drifting, you'll have more control of a drift car. I really did not like how this run went. It went awful. It did not go the way I wanted it to in the very slightest. I was flip-flopping everywhere, all over the place. The handling was as it should be. And I know that sounds crazy. You're like, what, what the? I want to drift. I want to drift. You can use the normal middle ground handling setup if you want to drift a race car. If that's what you want to do. That seems to be the new middle ground that you want to go for. But if you are <laughs> drifting, then this very much is the only way to go now. Of course, you can use a stock car still. But overall, drift is better for drift now. Middle is good for both. Grip is only good for grip but it's actually good for grip. You'll see that momentarily. But again, second lap, a little bit better. Still a little bit sloppy because, again, this is not made for this purpose. This car is now absolutely useless for racing. I, in fact, hate this car <laughs> for what we're doing right now. It was awful. I did not get along with this car whatsoever. It just slid too much. And if it was, again, a drift event where I was trying to get points, that would make a lot more sense. I don't get me wrong, it's much more controllable than it has been in 2015. But comparing it to Need for Speed uh, Payback, which had a pretty decent drift handling, I would say, this is harder. And I, pref I, I personally, again, I'm not much of a drifter, I would say the, the handling on Payback was easier because you can now spin out on this, which makes it a whole other, which makes me excited to actually make a drift car. In fact, we're a, a second slower. Even though it looked pretty bad, it was only a second slower than the standard, but there, huh? that's how it should be, right? So now we're switching to our race car, putting on the plate, putting on the track suspension. Now, you may notice if you go through these settings, there's a few different ones like race and track. There's a bit of a difference in terms of it's better for off-road and there's, there's a balancing of where you want the icon to fall on the little square to give you an idea of what it's gonna be. But the launch, can we talk about the launch? Did you see how quick that launch was? And straight away, I went a little bit too wide, had a little bit of a slide. You're going to be interested to know some, something I learned as we progressed through with this. Now, it is totally possible to slide. I don't want to say drift. Slide a race car. And you may be happy to know that. You may be unhappy to know that. I was personally a little bit unhappy. It's a full grip car. It shouldn't really be sliding. And I was informed by the developers this is something to do with the new acceleration method. Now, think of it this way. I think the main reason they decided to get rid of brake to drift and replace it with clutch kick is because with brake to drift, no matter what, if you press the brake, it's going to whack out into a slide, and that's really annoying. So then they put clutch kick in, which practically did the same thing. <laughs> it was, it's, it's, another, it's another scenario, but it's a little bit better than that of Brake to Drift if you're not wanting to drift, right? Does that make any sense? I think that makes sense. So anyway, the second run, a little better on the exit. Learning the speed of control, the, t the steering angle of the car, it helps out a lot. And how am I no longer drifting? Well, there's a very interesting and easy way to avoid drifting altogether. Normally with Need for Speed, it's an arcade racer. You get to a corner, you want to come out of the corner, you smash on the throttle. And this is more of an issue on PlayStation because when you're using the analogs, there's not as much travel, I would say. But again, on the Xbox, I use the Elite controller, so it's a little bit different. If you, get, if you go to a corner, press the brake, and then accelerate out hard, you're going to have a little bit of a slip. Sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes. To avoid this completely, there is two things you can do. If you're in a rear-wheel drive car, the best thing you can do is slowly come back onto the throttle. Even just doesn't have to be focused. Anyway, it's time for a comparison between three of them all together. My PC died during this. They were all 4K 60 FPS files. The poor thing could not handle it, but you can see very clearly the difference between the three. The standard... I would say is a very clear middle ground of the two. And you can tell by the reg plates if you want to know which is which. But now we're going to switch to 
the two side-by-side -side views here, which, my friends, is Drift and Race. And you can clearly see, even though I'm smashing into absolutely everything, because it is going to get used to the handling model of this game and the uh, the limits and the abilities of this handling model, that grip is definitely a million times faster in every single way. I'm already, like, I lined up the clips as to where they were at the start, and the grip is flying ahead, and that makes me so happy you have no idea. Again, Drift seems almost a disadvantage now if you're doing an event. Now, sure, there's some cars that are going to be a little bit different here and there. This is the Mustang, the same car, a low-end car that has been souped up a little bit to give us a decent kind of benchmark. It may be a somewhat different story depending on car to car, if you think about it. Now, I know that's the case with a few things. We'll dive into that a little bit later. But Drift versus Race, very, very clearly, Grip is the way to go, or Race, as they're calling it in this game kind of mix mishmash in the two so now it's time for stock versus drift and the same is going to kind of happen again you'll see that the stock is a bit more of a maintained slide compared to the drifts i'm just going to slide and there is no in between whatsoever next up we've got the stock versus race and um yeah again you can clearly see that a stock is very much a middle ground and race if you want to go fast, you gotta you gotta pick grip. Okay, that's literally the, that's the end of the story. There's no in betweens. Now, as I was mentioning before, it is possible to slide with race. It's more of a controlled kind of drift. Uh, but nonetheless, I was kind of annoyed when I saw that. But I then wanted to, de to demonstrate exactly what I was talking about a minute ago. When you very aggressively press the throttle. That's when that's going to happen with a rear-wheel drive car or low-end car only. If you slightly get on the throttle, it's very, very simple to avoid that slide. Going back to my Evo 10 video that we posted the other day, the Evo 10, the only way to get an Evo 10 or an all-wheel drive car in general to slide is by smashing the handbrake. They will not. Even if you throttle, 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 throttle it will refuse it is like no i am a grip car and there's nothing you can do about it unless you made it a drift car obviously so to summarize i would say i am very happy with how this handling turns out again this is not final this is not a deep deep dive like i would love to do because again there's a lot to go over there's different types of car all wheel drive rear wheel drive front wheel drive different engine swaps that could affect this but ultimately grip is now a instead of being a hidden menu option it is a full-on option for when you're building a car and i'm very very excited to get playing with all different types of handling setups so let me know your favorite what are you excited to try the most drift grip whatever off-road if you will be sure to smash like subscribe if you're new and i hope this video helped you out a lot until next time peace